Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about the collection. Actually, it will be consisting of two or three videos for this topic, but uh, today I'll be just starting with the introduction to the collection library in Scala. Let's get started. First of all, what is collection? We can think of the collection as, an, as a vessel which is used for collecting data and Scala has a vast library of them. And each Scala collection is uh, one of the two types, mutable collection or immutable collection. I already have talked about the meaning of mutable or immutable in my uh, one of the video in the Scala playlist. You can watch that in case if you're not aware of this. Mutable means which we can change, immutable means which we cannot change. So what are mutable collections? So mutable collections are the collections which can be updated, which can be changed. Elements can be added to the collection and it can be removed or manipulated. These are called as a mutable collections. What are immutable collections which are opposite of mutable, which cannot be updated, right? These are called as a immutable collections. So we can add, remove or manipulate an element in an immutable collection. You are creating a new collection and the leaving the old one unchanged, meaning is that the, the one from where you have started, this will uh, remain unaffected. but when you add, remove or manipulate an element in an immutable collection, we are actually creating a new collection. Uh, I, can, I can just uh, give you one example in this case, like uh, if you uh, have a knowledge of Spark, even in the case of Spark, we have a concept of RDDs, right? In RDD also, when we perform any operation transformation on an existing RDD, that RDD will become a parent RDD, which remain unaffected. But you can then keep on doing all the operations, but the original one will remain unaffected. This is called as a immutable collections. So next is sequences, sets and maps. The collection library takes on a hierarchical structure. At the top of library, we are having three main categories of collection classes. What are, the, what are those? First is sequence, which is uh, abbreviated as SEQ, sets and maps. First, we are having all the classes can uh, contain both mutable and immutable collections. This is a library, this is a gra uh, graphical representation. You can see it here. Uh, we have a library which is consisting of top three set seq map uh, set is consisting of mutable immutable and the same for the sequence as well as for the map as well what are sequences these are the collection which are part of the sequence class uh, which stores the element at the fixed index positions with the index starting at zero i'll be talking about this with the help of example in a scala in a while so each element has a pre-specified uh, location in the sequence and therefore can be located very easily. You can see this is how we can define the sequence. Next we have a set. The collections which are the set class con uh, contain sets of elements with no element existing more than once. It means there will be no duplicacy in the data. So we can see it here, apple, orange, banana and grape. This is how we can define the set. Last is maps. Uh, maps are very common uh, like uh, data structure so maps uh, contains collections which are the of the map class consist of the pairs of keys and values with each value being associated with the unique key again maps are not a new thing again we have seen this maps concept in the case of java in the case of hadoop so map key value pairs these are not a new thing right it's again a part of a scala so this is how we uh, talk about the map we have a key and we have a value we have a key we have a value in this way it is defined as a map so now if we talk about the difference between these three uh, types, which I've talked about SEQ set and uh, this one map. So for the sequence collections, the argument passed to apply specify an index. How we can define, how we can separate these three by applying the apply, apply method, right? That's why they're talking about here. The argument passed to the apply specify an index. The apply returns the element at the specified index. I'll be showing you in the, with the help of a little demo uh, just after this. Uh, for the set collections, the argument passed to the apply is an element in a specified collection. Apply returns true if the element is in a specified collection and false if it's not. And last, for the map collections, the argument passed to the apply specify a key. Apply returns the value of the specified key. At last, before we uh, go to the demonstration, per demonstration stuff, let's talk about the sequences. Although, as I've already stated in the beginning, that uh, the collections topic I'll be dividing into two or three videos because it's a, a little important topic because we just are started with the introduction only. So let's conclude with the last part which is called sequences. The sequence class is further divided into the two subclasses which are called as a index SEQ and linear SEQ. This is how it is shown graphically. You can see, see it here we have an index SEQ 
and we have a linear SEQ. Uh, further, we are having vector array, array buffer, range, list, stream. I'll be talking about these collections in the next video. Uh, the collections of the linear sequence class, right, this one, uh, have efficient uh, head and tail operations, whereas the collections under this category index SEQ have a efficient apply and length operations. So this is all about the uh, introduction of this collection library. Let's go to the Scala now. Let's see how the what's the difference between these three SEQ, SCT, set and map. I've already have opened up the my Scala here, right? And I've already have written the examples in the notepad file. Okay, just to save the time. First of all, uh, we'll be creating a collection here with us, which is sequence one. Okay, let's see it here. First, let's create a collection. Copy it here and pasting it here. I got my sequence created, right, of integers. Afterwards, I'm applying the apply method and I'm, I'm just specifying one because index start from zero, it should return four here. You can see it here, answer is four, right? Although we can display with the print as well, the result. So this is how the sequence works, right? So I got answer four. In the same way, let's talk about the set. Uh, there'll be no duplicacy as it's a characteristic of set, which I already have seen this. Let's see it here as well. I've just created a set which is consisting of apple, orange, banana, grape, and I'm just uh, checking it out here, orange, whether it's available or not. Yes, it's true, because it will be returning true if the element is available in the set, otherwise it will be returning false, right? At last, we are having the map. In this case, it will be showing the uh, associated value of that key. Let's see it here. I'm copy and pasting. I have a map consisting of A25, B50, and C75, and applying the C here. C correspond to 75 as a value, so I got 75 here. This is how the map works. I hope guys, with this little short video, you must be uh, uh, get some information about the collection library. In the next video, I'll be talking about for each method, and in the next video, I'll be talking about the collections in more detail. Thanks for watching guys, see you next video.